All right, so today we're going to start in an 8-1, exploring inverse variation. And what I want you to do is I want you to spend, you get no more than five minutes on the work together on page 350. Okay, questions one through four. And then we're going to go through what the relationship between x and y are in direct variation, what the relationship is in inverse variation. Okay, you're ready, go. I could do the well, thingy. let's go ahead and come back together here. Here's uh, the table and the graph for the work together. Now, we have time, and we have our rate here. And we know that at five seconds, we follow this, and we find out that it is? What is it? 12? Speed's 12, OK. Um, how about at 6? 10? How about at 8? Is it 7.5? Kind of guess in there? Yeah. All right. How about nine? Well, we're really guessing on that one. I'm going to put an approximation there. Okay. Okay. How about 11? We're really guessing at what is it? 5.75. We'll see dissension amongst the ranks. We're going to go there. Okay. All right. Now. We know that they are bowling, and over the course of time, as they roll the ball, and the ball continues down the lane, the speed of the ball, as the time increases, the speed decreases. decreases. Okay, everyone get that? Now, obviously, when you roll the ball, the speed's decreasing there. All right? Well, what distance is that ball going? Go ahead and talk about that. How far does that ball have to go? All right, so I guess it actually tells you it's 60. So our distance is equal to 60. And so this is our distance in feet. I'm going to add a column here. Now, some of you, that will stress you out because you're like, I leave room to add a column. I didn't deal with it. Okay, that's okay. Just take a breath and it'll be all right. All right. You have to exhale too. So we don't have to put it. Inhale and exhale. You don't have to write this down, though. No. You, you can if you want to really understand. But if you don't want to really understand, don't worry. OK? So I know. I'm just joking. All right. So what is the relationship between distance, rate, and time? Anyone know that relationship? Ooh, a couple think you know. All right. Tell your neighbor what you think it is. You have five seconds. R equals D over T. OK, time's up. What is it? Yes? Um, speed equals distance over time. Is that speed meaning rate? Yes. Okay. So if, could I manipulate to that to saying distance equals RT? Everyone agree? Distance equals rate times time. Now if that's true, are these accurate? What should our distance be? Make sure all these are accurate. Five times twelve was sixty for sure. Oh Still God, is even. And six times ten is also sixty. Is eight times seven and a half sixty? Yes. How about nine times seven? That's sixty-three, dude. Unbelievable. What should that be? Six point six seven. Six point six seven or six and two thirds. Two thirds. Now, how did we do that? Everyone agree you're dividing 60 by 9? Yeah. You're doing D divided by T to get R, which is what Nick said. Well done, Nick. So we get 6 and 2 thirds. Okay? So in this case, our 60 divided by our 9. Okay? All right, how about this last one? Is it 5.8? 5.4. Oh, man. 5 and what? Five elevens, thank you. Okay, all right. Once again, distance equals rate times time, so a rate is distance over time. All right, when we graph this, we get this graph that kind of looks like this. It actually kind of looked like what type of graph we studied? Exponential. <coughs> Exponential decay. Now, we know it's, it's not decay. We may not know that yet, but it is not decay. This is actually a rational function. Okay, this is rational. It's a 
It's called a inverse variation. Now you've studied a variation this year. However, that in, that variation that we studied this year was called a direct variation. How many remember what a direct variation is? Okay, remind your neighbor what a direct variation is if you can remember. Okay, what is it? Jordan, what'd you get? It's a linear graph that passes through the origin. Okay, it's a linear graph that passes through the origin. Okay, if you remember, we did that earlier in the year. This is a direct variation. It's a linear function that passes through the origin. Remember, we called that y equals, we didn't use the word, the letter k like our book does. We used the letter m. m standing for our slope. And slope is what over what? Rise over run or y over x. Change in y over change in x. So to find slope, all we'd do is we'd divide by x on this side. We'd get y over x equals m or y over x equals the way our book's writing it is k. This should be old news to you. This is just slope. Okay, and in a direct variation, our slope is just y over x. Okay, now how many how many remember that? That was direct variation. Okay, inverse variation has a similar type. And watch this, watch this amazing transition. <coughs> oh, I know. That's old school PowerPoint right there. Alright? There we go. So y equals k over x. Now note the difference between direct and inverse. Inverse variation, y equals k over x, where direct variation, y equals k times x. One you're multiplying by x, one you're dividing by x. Note when we solve for our constant, we, we're multiplying x by y to find the constant. Here, we were dividing x by y to find the constant. Like in slope, it's y over x. In inverse variation, it's y times x, or x times y. And that's what you just did in that amazing bowling example. Right? You were multiplying what two things to find what? Time. Yeah, you were multiplying rate times time to find distance. x times y to find constant. Okay, This was our x, this was our y, this was our constant. That is a direct variation, or an inverse variation, excuse me. Okay? How many are with me so far? So a little background knowledge there. So if this is true, if I can multiply x by y to find a constant in an inverse, and I can divide y by x to find a constant in a direct variation, then on these three problems, 5a and b and number 6, I want you to figure out which ones are direct, which ones are inverse, and possibly which are neither direct nor inverse. Okay, work with your groupies there. All right, 5A. How many say direct, inverse, neither? Okay, so a lot of you said direct. So that would imply that you can divide y by x to get a constant. What's that constant? 18 divided by 1.2 is? Is it 15? Good. Make sure you're dividing the correct way, right? Y over X. Okay? Good. So this would be this would be a direct. Would it be what? Mm, 18 divided by 1.2. Okay, how about B? How many say direct? Inverse? Neither? Oh, we got some inverses and neithers. Okay. Let's check it out. This one right here, those of you who say direct, that would mean x times y equals a constant. What would be our constant then? Looks like 70 or 0.72 right there. Is this 0.72? Not having a lot of people announce there. Is this 0.72? Yeah. yeah. So this is called a inverse. inverse. Remember, it's inverse because we can multiply x by y to get that constant. All right, how about six? How many say direct? <coughs> inverse. Neither. Ooh, all neither. That means, well, this looks like if we multiply them, you get a half and you get a half here. Dude, I, you sure it's not inverse? That's 0 0.5 and that's 0 0.5. What's this? 0 0.375. Yeah. Tried to get tricky. Okay. 
Not triggy, tricky. Yep. All right. This one is neither. All right. Well, let's focus in on the two that were something. Any questions on those? Okay. Write the equation now in terms of y. Write the equation for each of those. Okay. Well, let's see. Remember, this is the y over x equals k. Well, what is k? 15. So y over x equals 15. So what's y equal? That's a bad 15. But y equals 15x. How many got it? Good. And this one starts out as x times y equals 0 0.72, which means y equals 0 0.72 over x. How many got it? Good, except for we can't leave that as a, fra a decimal within a fraction. That's illegal. Okay? In terms of math. It's Sorry. an infraction. <laughs> infraction. Get it? Guys, get it? It's an infraction. Like an infraction. That's good stuff, man. Jocelyn, you're going to make a great math teacher. Well done. All right. So, we multiply by what? How do we get rid of this? Multiply by 100. And we don't really want to change the value of this side, so we'd have to multiply by 100 over 100, which is really multiplying by 1. Okay, now when we do that, that gives us what on top? 72, and on the t bottom? 100x. And 72 over 100x reduces. What goes into 72 and 100? 2. This becomes 36. And this becomes 50x. Holy cow, and that reduces. Cut that in half again. 18 over 25x. X. So y equals 18 over 25x. That is our equation. I know, you're welcome. OK? Good stuff, man. We could have divided by 4 to begin with if we wanted to, but that's OK. Any questions? Rate yourself one to five. Five, you got it. One, you don't got it. Okay. Some of you don't have fingers. <laughs> that's okay. All right. I lost right? them in the war. All right. Here we go. Inverse variation. So, if you have not figured this out yet, that is what we're doing. Just so you know. All right. Now, if that is the case, number seven, A, B, and C. I am telling you that A, B, and C, these are all three different problems. I am telling you that this is a point on the graph, on a graph of an inverse variation. Write the equation. Actually, let's start with this. Just find the constant of variation. Start by finding the constant of variation for A, B, and C. Once you find the constant, then write the equation. No, there are three different problems, three different graphs, three different ones. Okay? Just quit screen. All right. It's like a lot of screaming. No, I know. Like, I feel like, how about no? What's K right here? 21. 21, yeah, we just, X times Y, right? X times Y is K, so 3 times 7, 21. So our equation is X times Y equals 21, or Y equals... 21 over x. All right. Very good. How many got that one? Nito Dorito. All right. Progressing. 2.5 times 1.5 is? 3.75. And so our equation, x times y equals 3.75, which means y equals? 3.75 over x, which is illegal. It's an infraction. Nice. Yep. It's an infraction. Once again, illegal. So how do we get rid of it? In this case, times 100, because we've got to move it two decimals. So that's 375 over 100x. What goes into both 100 and 375? Five. Five. What else? 25, right? How many, how many quarters? 15 over 4. Well done. Yay. 
Total Y. 15 times 1 third is 5. X times Y equals 5. So Y equals 5 over X. All right. Any questions on those? We get a graph them tomorrow. Yay. I know something to look forward to. Yeah. Good warm dreams. Yeah, of graphing. Uh, graphing these. These are amazing. All right. Try number eight and nine, or no, number eight. This one and this one. Two different ones. Once again, they are. These are two coordinates from the same graph. Find out what y has to be if it lies. This point lies on the same graph as this point. No, you're trying to find out what y is. It's an inverse. It's an inverse variation that lie, and both these coordinates lie on the same graph. Solve for y. If um, if these are two coordinates, okay. If if this is a if this is an ordered pair on a graph, and this is the same graph, different ordered pair, we know that both of these would have to be equal because they have to equal the same constant. Okay, so 2 thirds times 1 fourth is 2 times 1, or 2, and 3 times 4, or 12. 2 twelfths, which also is known as 1 sixth, one sixth has to equal 1 half of y, or what's 1 half of y? How do we write that as a fraction? Y over 2. Y over 2. Why? Because 1 half times y is like that and that's y over 2 thank you we weren't able to see that up there you, huh? You, we can't. oh well, thank you for saying unbelievable I know thank you you're working hard that's 2 like that. equals 6y so what's y? Oh. y equals 1 third All right. What'd you guys get on this one? Tell your neighbor. Y equals one twenty over x. Oh well, I got twenty four for x. How many got twenty four? Yeah. Very good. Questions. What'd you get? Oh, I did the first one <coughs> a different way. I got the same answer, roughly. What do you mean roughly? Like I got y equals 0 0.34. Did you round? Well, yeah, because like, the first time I got 0 0.16666, <coughs> I rounded to 1.67, and then it became 0.34. So. Did you get the same answer the second time? I didn't. I didn't finish that one. We'll try it your way, and let's see if it works. Cool, cool. Okay. Any questions? Your assignment. You have to do the example side number nine. Example side number nine. And you have to do the mixed side, one through 18. One through 18, mixed side. That's it. Yeah, I got the same thing. What's the catch? No catch. The answers are on the board. Let me know if you need help.